All right, welcome back. This is part five of the uh, 57 Chevy series uh, Tahoe frame swap. Uh, in this video, we got the four major components pretty well done to begin to tear the cab off the body again, or off the chassis, and to start paint. So we'll show you what they are, but uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. All right, so on this, when we did the unboxing of the Vintage Air, I didn't get this part of the Vintage Air out of this stuff out of the box. This is kind of cool, and I think I should show you. There's two options when you buy the Vintage Air, at least there was one option. It had a box that went in here, and it had black knobs that twist, look like off of a 1980s Chevette. So there's black knobs that had a red and blue trigger on them, or a red and blue indicator on them, and you could get cold or hot, and it just looked like old 1980s. Or you could upgrade and get the one that looks like the 57 original. So of course, if in doubt, upgrade. Fan, mode, hot, cold. So pretty darn cool. But it looks more like the old Chevy parts. All right, so this is the OEM defroster duct that's up in there. And we have to take that one out because uh, the vintage air hits it. It must come in at a different angle. I'll have to look in the box and see what we have. Try this again. We got the duct out. Thinking it's gonna nest all the way up in there like that, which isn't too bad. That's kind of normal heater looking stuff. Okay, so this is the old um, defroster duct that went up in there. This is a lot lower profile because the vintage air comes up in here. There'll have to be a tube that comes off. The vintage air. This is the piece that goes against the firewall from the inside. There are um, four, four little bolts here that have to come out. And then once we get that out, there's a bracket. This bracket is gonna go on there. Um, I should go try this bracket up under the firewall to see if I can find the holes to make it reach. All right, so on the back side against the firewall now, I got this bracket mounted and I found the holes that I drilled in there from the template that was given to us by Vintage Air. So I drilled the holes, all the different holes that said to do. I had to uh, open up some that needed opened up bigger and I've got all those done. So these two, there's a hole in the firewall for that. And then on the inside, this bracket, this is against the dash. This is going to go right here, and this is gonna bolt on up under the dash somewhere. I'm gonna to have to drill some holes for that, but I gotta mark it. So we're gonna put it together, and uh, then we'll get it up under the dash and see if we can get in there and mark it somehow. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna weld them off shut, all the holes that we don't use. But right now I got my lovely assistant, Eric, with me on the back. I'm going to try to figure out how to get this up there. Oh, it's tight. Do you see any holes? No. Huh. Oh, I had it, but I dropped it. It should be about right there. Yeah, there's nothing yet. The top hole? I can feel it on the hole. Which way does it need to go? Oh, the hole's not. Now look. Now look. Stay right there. Raise that just a little bit. Well, that's pretty darn cool. I like that. From passenger's view, you won't see a lot of it. Plenty of leg room. So, we got two, two bolts 
that are uh, there's a three-eighth bolt on the uh, three-eighth inch hole on the top, and one straight below it that fits on the bracket on the back of the vintage air. So right now we're bolted up. So where the glove box goes out, there's a piece that goes in. It's going to go over to make you a tiny little glove box. Probably just enough for your registration, but that's kind of cool. A little plug that goes in there. Uh, I have to shorten one of the arms. Well, take off one arm, shorten the other one. And uh, so they still open, but they don't hit the AC unit in the back side because there's stuff right behind there. So I have to take this one off and bend this one shorter. But kind of cool. So now that comes apart right there. So we can put the steering column on and then this pivots so that we can, you know, get the right angle off the dash. Okay, I'm gonna push that up. And I'm gonna tighten this. This has a little swivel clamp right there. Look at that. How's that shifter position gonna be? Is it gonna be right? Just tightening this up to get it mocked up so I can get the steering wheel on it. I got a new steering wheel. Have you seen the steering wheel yet? No. Okay, I'm gonna present Have they it. seen the steering no. wheel? Okay. Best inventions ever, can I show you? Five dollars on Amazon. This little baby saves a lot of high head knocks. And it he just... has scars on his head from hitting it on the bottom of this Chevy. <laughs> you can just, uh, Slide them in your ball cap. They actually keep the back ball cap in good shape. And uh, they just go up in there. Well worth five bucks on Amazon. But nice addition. It's a little sweaty, but I've kind of used to it. I don't know if this is going to be the right steering wheel, but I think it's kind of cool. Ooh. Okay. Is that kind of pretty? Can you hold it? Okay, it's wait, a, hang on. Hold it's it there. A 14, it's a 14 inch, and I don't know if I needed a 16. This is kind of small, yeah. Yeah, and it might be just right, though, for that. Okay, so <clears throat> I did it a little bit wrong. I had to go do, I had to go look at the directions. I found a video on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. I learned how to do everything on YouTube. And uh, so, first goes down the, the billet aluminum piece that, uh, has the splines in it then second we're going to put the um, column cover over the top lining up our holes then we add the spacer now, i don't have my horn and stuff hooked up so i'm going to go ahead and just mock it up oops so better to do that in that order instead of putting the horn or the steering wheel on it just didn't work as well and because i couldn't get the horn kind of encapsulated uh, this area and made a ring you couldn't get your socket on those things then i was missing the bolts i'm like where why didn't they send me the bolts well they came in the horn kit they were in the horn and i'll show you that here in a second so we're going to put all of these in once we get them lined up. I apologize. Sometimes you're going to hear my heaters fire up, but I love y'all, but I don't, uh, I don't like being cold. Someday I'll tell you a cold story that uh, kind of tells you why I don't like cold. But this is cool. It's got the horn in it. And a little horn button there. We got the Chevy bow tie in the middle. That's gonna look better. All right, try it again. Um, how about we get it straight? Does that spin in there? Oh, it spins. Okay. I wish I could work as fast as 
Afton speeds up my videos, I'd really get something done if I could really move that fast. I could get a day's worth of work in 20, in 23 minutes. I feel like I know some people that can work that fast. I have a nephew that I've told you about. His name is Brent. And he can work that fast, I think. The amount of stuff he gets done. Now, I know I don't have the nut on and I don't have the nut. I'm just gonna go slide it over the wheel. I don't have it bolted together, but there's gonna be our horn. Uh, I wanna find a classy sounding horn for this. Uh, Something different than just a stock horn. Uh, all right, let's go put it on the truck, see how it looks. There she be. Woo! It look good. God, I almost like that polished look. Can I clear coat that steel? Uh, let me turn my lights on so you can get a look at it. Hold on. So I did, it does make a brushed aluminum uh, steering column. This is the steel one that's paintable, but I kind of like the looks of that. I don't know, should I do it black? I guess putting the shiny steering wheel on there, I should have got the polished one. But can I just clear coat this or oil it or do something so it doesn't rust? But let's go see how it lines up uh, under the hood with the factory Tahoe parts. All right, that ain't gonna take much, but uh, that's pretty darn close. We're gonna be steering this thing tomorrow. I'm tired of twisted wheels. Every time I have to move, I end up putting the floor jack underneath the beam, lift it up, spin the tires, let it back down, push it in and out. And I don't, I don't always like it right here on my shop. This is kind of close. I like it close to the toolbox, but it's kind of close. I'd rather have it out in the middle a little more, but the lift, that's the friend magnet. Uh, we have had a project on there. I don't mean to make fun of my friends and friend magnet, but I'll tell you, I've had a lot of jobs in here on that lift. Stuff that I never would have done before, but now we can do them. I don't do it all. Sometimes they come in and they're working on their stuff. I've had somebody here Probably three of three different people this week. Nephew, a co-worker. So I'm kind of squoze to the side, not complaining. I'm very blessed. The room is phenomenal. I mean, I have three vehicles here, Jeep, frame. I got the wagon back there. I am very, very blessed. And, and I share. That's one of the whole things about this shop is I share it. Because it isn't, I'm, I'm blessed beyond means, beyond measure. And we also have... Uh, CJ in here so and we got the lift is still open so I have to say I feel that I need to share because I've been blessed with this space so I do now I'm not going to store anybody's RV I had a few people can I store my camper in there no I'm not going to store a camper but uh I'm grateful for the space uh I do like it over here I think I need to move my anvil uh, I love my anvil here I'm pounding on it all the time but it's kind of in the middle on this project. I'm always going around it. I stuck a board on it and kind of wired it down because we keep banging our thigh on the horn. So we'll walk by and jam our... We all got rips in our pants and little poke marks in our thigh from the horn of the anvil, which I rounded it off a little bit, but uh, I love the anvil there. I was doing a lot of blacksmithing and forging uh, in previous uh, days, just a few weeks ago. I should give you a quick tour of the forge. I haven't I, I haven't done much with it for a few days. Well, no, I was using it over Christmas. Uh, but I built this forge and I'll, I'll give a, I'm gonna put a video up on how I built this forge and uh, what I'm able to do with it. I do, I, we built a few knives. Uh, I like to do different things. I built my wife some wrought iron furniture for Christmas. It's just a microwave stand, but it comes and twists. Uh, it's like a half inch square tubing that comes down and twists on each rod. It's got multiple shelves, holds the microwaves just where she wants them, out of the reach of the grandbabies, and it's sturdy. Uh, everything I do is sturdy. <laughs> it's pretty pretty harsh, but I'll, I'll show you some knives and stuff. So when you see the videos on the uh, Forge, they'll come up. I know it's not 57 videos. It's something we did in the past, but I'm going to throw it out there because I, 
I couldn't find instructions on how to build a forge online from anybody, not real detailed stuff. So I did a detailed forge build and we'll get back to that. I also have a wagon build and we'll show that one someday too. So sorry for the car guru guys that are gonna get a little bit of, if you come to the channel, just be patient. We'll still try to have a truck one every week. So thanks uh, for sticking with me through those different videos. Hopefully we get them out. I have to, I didn't really inspect my boxes very well. I'm not a very good unboxing expert, but I just uh, dug into my, I did it box and I have the um, blinker switch, the um, tilt, and then the all flasher, tiny little, uh, and they're all the same shape, little billet. And then I also have the shifter knob uh, in. So let's put that on there. Fall over. Oh. So uh, it's gonna look good. Uh, it's gonna look good right there. Pull back. Oh. Whew. I'm excited, guys. Starting to have a little bling on it. Not that it's staying, but we had to get it all dolled up. I just don't know if I'm gonna be cutting that firewall up to make it line up a little better. Now, I'm sure some of this stuff is my position sensor for my shift position sensor information. I don't know. I don't know what all I have here. And then I got my regular GM plug that's gonna go in there. But uh, it's gotta be a cover. Maybe there's a plug that goes over that. What I'm talking about is this uh, kind of hidden in the shadows. Um, now now it's hidden in more shadows. But I'm just looking at this plug on the on the shifter down here. I don't know how it's gonna look and what that's gonna go, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Oh, I got a new box. I'm gonna open that too. Okay, we got one more box. This is from Performance Online. I'm pretty confident what this is. It's my brake booster. I'm impressed. Uh, everybody said it's gonna take a little while to get stuff out, but it's been pretty quick. I have no complaints with Performance or Summit or, so Performance Online, Summit Racing. I did it, guys, we're great. Um, they, they were cool on the, I did it. I was uh, struggling to find the right one and they looked around at their distributors and found me one and sent me to Summit to get my steering column. Uh, I'm kinda, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm still thinking I wish I had the black one because I don't want to paint it, but I like the steel look. I don't know, we're gonna see how that goes. We got some tiki grass here, something. Shredded cardboard, recycled. Hey, we're all about it. We'll recycle, reuse. All right, what do we got here? All right. Ooh, I kind of like the pedal. Look at this. That looks like, that looks like my old starter pedal. Uh, but that's pretty cool. So this goes up under the dash and mounts through the firewall. Uh, but take a look at that old pedal. I think that's kind of cool. I like that. So that's gonna be my brake pedal. Um, it's gonna go up under the dash. That's gonna bolt up against the front of the firewall from the inside. There's the beast. So there's our vacuum booster and brake reservoir. So I'm just gonna nest that back in there. We got a box of parts. Oh, Performance Online, I think they put this kit together. I don't know where they get their individual components, but we got, we got brake line pieces. We got some other bracketry. We got some switch mechanism uh, in a box of hardware, it feels like. Uh, what do we got here? Hold on. Is this a proportion valve? All right. Somebody who knows what this is, tell me, but I guess this goes on the side of my... Yeah, I don't know. Is that a proportion valve? Is that what I got there? I got to look into it, but... Uh, pretty solid 
built, well built piece. But I think performance puts this together. And it's specific for 55 to 57 Chevy trucks. GMC, GM, Chevy and, and uh, GMC. So, uh, like I said earlier, if anybody is uh, looking, I know where a 57 Chevy cab is on a frame. It's been modified. The dash isn't original. The handles have been stripped off the doors. But it's 57 GMC. I think they got like a full truck. Bed, fenders, cab, the frame. The frame's been chopped and lowered. Has a C, uh, home built C thing to drop the axle up into the frame. It's got a different front clip on it, but I think they could get it for 2,500 bucks. I don't know. That's what he offered it to me, uh, but it's out there. If somebody's interested, holler at me and message me. It's in Utah, uh, but I don't think I have a use for it right now. I got enough project as there is. Uh, <laughs> my, my daughter's projects keep me busy well enough. I have her, she's got a little S10. She isn't even driving yet. She's got an S10. You gotta do some front end work on that. And she wants to fix it up, so we're doing it. But that's part of life, and we're having fun. Okay, we couldn't resist trying out the brake pedal. So this piece is gonna go through the firewall, four bolts, and this piece is gonna go through the firewall. All right, hope you don't mind the journey with me. I'm just trying to figure this out. I should have a clamp or something to hold that up. Goodness, there's a one bolt hole that lines up. I wish I had a bolt. Nothing in sight, I have to let it go. I'm gonna get a little, a little screw to go through one of those holes right there. Okay, I got one little self-tapper screw here. We're gonna see if we can get that spine back up with that one hole showed up again. Let's see if we can get a little screw in there. Oh, I don't think it's the same one as the... <clears throat> Self I was looking at it. Maybe it'll hold. Look at that. All right. So, our hole for our booster is about two inches from the center of the hinge. Is that gonna, cause I think this is the, this plate is what the hinge is mounted on, right here. So, let's go to the other side and see what we got. Okay, so that's a long ways over there. My brake pedal needs to be over on this side. And my mount is all the way over there. If my brake, how's this gonna work? Did they send me a, a European one? I don't know what's going on. So here's my bracket up against the uh, steering bracket. That's the steering center. So that's up against there. Here's our firewall. I mean, I could trim it out and bring it over, but right now, I mean, I could only bring it over two inches where it would be directly below the steering column. Uh, I don't mind a left, left foot brake, but that wasn't my plan. <laughs> uh, it's just a long ways over there for the brake. I got to figure out what I'm doing here. I might have to pull out this old piece and I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do yet. Cause that's a long ways over there. So the throttle to brake is a long, long way. It should be, we should be right there somewhere. I gotta figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to look at the instructions. I just found online that they removed this entire steering bracket that holds the e-brake and stuff. It comes off the firewall, that comes completely over. The pedal is going to go to the other side of the steering column and the, I didn't know we had to do that. And then the hole will go right there uh, in the second 
band. Anyway, I found some instructions online. I'm gonna go look in the box and see if there are more instructions, but this whole old assembly is going out and the new one's coming in and the brake booster will be almost straight above the steering column. Look at that, very specific instructions. I didn't even consider to look for instructions. This is great, look at this. It tells me right where to put it through the firewall from the inside, from the outside, what brackets to remove, how to do it. So we're in good shape. So this bracket is under the dash. That's looking out the gauge cluster, right? So here's our gauge cluster right there. But here underneath, this is what mounts the steering wheel mounts right in those two holes. But this whole whole bracket has to come out. There was some bolts here, but we have to go, I have to cut. There's some spot welds up there. I think I'm just gonna cut right along here and cut that bracket off. There's another spot weld right there, so I'm gonna have to cut cut that off too. But I think uh, I'd rather cut it than try to drill out my spot welds. Okay. We got it cut out. It's gonna fit. There we go. Voila. Free and clear. I think I'm gonna save that piece for my e-brake mount and weld it onto the bottom of this new mount so that we can make it make the heat brake work sorry i've been underneath there struggling now this piece is supposed to go right up there like that and look and behold those holes match my steering column mount so it says we're eight and a half from the hinge on the hood is where that needs to be. So we're gonna put a red mark there. That's our thing. And then we're supposed to be seven inches from the seam, which we're in the seam right there. Oh, we were in the seam. And we're gonna go right there. So there's our intersect line where that's supposed to be the center of the brake booster. Now let's see if we can get it to line up. So we're going to put this back up in here. So this has a hole that goes on the firewall that that needs to go over that X. So we're bolting this uh, booster in here, or the pedal. And it looks like we have a little bit of leeway in those sliders. So now let's see where we are underneath. So that's gonna work right there. There's the center of our red X and it's gonna be pretty centered in that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a hole saw and we're gonna cut that out. All right, so we got our two and a half inch hole drilled in the firewall, which is seven inches from the seam and eight and a half inches from the hood hinge. And now we're gonna go on with our brake booster and see if we can get it in the hole. Oh, I gotta have a spacer plate. There is a spacer plate that holds it off the firewall. And I honestly think that I need, oh, look at that. Stink dang, it fits right over the top. Dude, it's amazing. See that little notch? That goes right over this little hump and it fits right on there and doesn't even hesitate to work right. Let's see, I don't know how I'm supposed to hold this. I guess like that. So we can position our pedal. I'm gonna put the cutter pin in. There's our brake pedal. I think it needs to be up this tiny bit, you think? No. All right, we got gas, we got brake. That gas is gonna be off the Let's see if we can get some throttle pedal action. 
There we go. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to make the throttle push. Cause right now this throttle pedal is currently, was a rod that just pushed in, on the carburetor and swung the linkage on the carburetor. And I got a cable pull on the new one. So I don't want any mechanism out here doing a cable pull. So I gotta be under the firewall with some kind of rod, hook my cable this way. So when I push the rod down, it pulls the cable this way. So I gotta build a mechanism to get my throttle cable. I wanna use my old pedal. So, but that's, that's gonna be pretty good right there. I don't think I'm in the right place. <laughs> we fell out of the, off into the step side. We're in the step. This is about where we're gonna be setting. I wanna put the steering column back in there. But there we are. Our brake pedal's on the right, on the right side of the steering column. When I first put it in there, this bracket, I didn't know I had to cut this bracket out that was in there. So I had this setting over here. I felt like I had to go like that. I run my brake with this pedal because the pedal was on this side. But now that we got it cut out, it slides in there and it fits nicely. My steering column will go through these same bolts that are going through this plate, right up through there. And then I'm gonna have to see, I wanna see if I can re-weld re this to this bracket right up in here so I still got my park brake. So I can still pull my park brake with this handle. I don't want something on the floorboard here to get my feet caught up there. But if I have this little baby sitting right up underneath there, just like that, I can weld that. I can weld this, weld that piece. So I'm gonna cut, cut that bracket off of there. And uh, this, this mounted right in there. So I'll cut that bracket off with that angle and weld these arms right at the bottom of this plate. And then I'll have that whole pattern and I'll be able to have my original brake handle set right like that, tucked up in there. For whatever reason, it was kind of low like that. And sometimes when we had the clutch, my foot, I have a brace on both legs. So because of my paralysis, my legs are braced. So my feet are always at 90 degrees. But before I get my foot on the clutch and this was down in here and I'd get my toe hooked underneath this and I couldn't get my foot off the clutch. And so I think I'm gonna to try to bring this up a little higher, just enough to get your hand on it and pull it out and let it go. It doesn't, the other one, it used to be down in this position, but I'm gonna bring it up there. We'll get her done. We're in the money on the brakes now. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, the radiator is in a shop in American Fork and uh, it's a really cool old shop. It's a Tanner's radiator and they cut out a piece on the corner, took a piece of aluminum angle from another, it looked like an aluminum angle iron and flipped it over. And so now instead of having the bottom of the radiator comes like down and out like this, it comes down, has a little step in it and goes back and it'll fit in beside that idler arm. So they're working on that. I'll show you as soon as I get that back from the radiator shop tomorrow. Real quick through our checklist. So we got brakes now. We got a brake booster mounted. We got the holes in the firewall we need. We got the steering column mounted. We got the holes through the floorboard that we need. I do need to get my U-joint still. I had the wrong one. Um, I initially thought that I had to put a three quarter inch on the inside of the, I did it steering column, but it's really a one inch that goes on the outside. And so I had to get a new U-joint that's one inch. And then my Tahoe is a one inch, so I'm going to be one inch U-joint into a one inch piece of double D that goes into the existing uh, steering box um, shaft that comes out of there. So we're going to have a pretty straight shot into the steering box. So again, count, brake, uh, steering, the radiator will be done, but our, uh, our vintage air, we got to get that in there, see where our lines got to go through, because we're going to need four lines. There's two AC lines and then a hot water line and a cold water, well, return water uh, through lines that, that go through the firewall in specific places off of the vintage air. So I gotta get that in there, figure out how it's gonna mount, mark those holes, drill those. Then we're pulling it all out. We're gonna take all the components out that we've got and we're gonna weld up the holes in the cab that we don't want. So this isn't a 
right now it's Swiss cheese and we're gonna have a hurricane in here. Uh, so we're gonna mount, fill up all those holes. I don't know, some real nice rubber grommets might be in there, but it would not look as good. I think I'm gonna go in there and smooth them off and plate it up and make sure it's nice and smooth. Start painting. The things that are done and in, that are completed now. So I'm gonna transition over here. So we got the steering column in and uh, I'm gonna have you film for me. I just, we got tilt. So we got our tilt wheel. Uh, we will have a horn hooked up. We got our automatic transmission. We don't have linkage hooked up. These are all the things I needed to do to get the cab ready for paint. I uh, drilled all the holes. We got the the uh, brake bracket in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in, zoom in in here. So we got the bracketry under the dash that holds the uh, master cylinder um, up under the hood and also controls, holds the brake pedal. So we got our brake throttle and if you remember i had the brake all the way over here when i first started but i really like that pedal it's kind of old school i think that's cool oh then we also have our vintage air is bolted in and plumbed here's our brake booster steering columns coming through um, still waiting on a u-joint to connect the steering column um, we have our all of our holes drilled in the firewall down there for the uh, coolant lines and we're waiting on the radiator it should be done tomorrow i'm pretty much hoping i think they're off for president's day so Anyway, thanks for watching. I tell my wife I'm out of Mountain Dew. She says, check my trunk. My wife loves me.